Hey everyone, so I'm going to post a really, really condensed down version of my Red Eosmon EX3 video. So my last video was like over an hour long. So for those people who don't have the time to watch it or who don't want to watch like an hour long video, like um, you can skip around in there. I will put some um, timestamps so they can just skip around. But if you just want to watch like a really condensed version, um, that won't be as thorough as the hour long version, but I will still go over uh, most of the tips uh, or like the important tips on how to play the deck. And I'm just going to make this really short and quick um, straight to it um, deck profile video for my ESPON EX3 deck. So let's get into it. So in my ESPON EX3 deck, I'm playing um, four eggs. They are all the same. They are the EX2 GG mon. So this GG mon um, has an inheritable when attacking once per turn if this Digimon um, has Gilmon, Growlmon, or Gallantmon in its name. Um, draw one. Draw one card from your deck. So this is really good. Um, so Eosmon needs a draw engine. So just having this GG Mon and running a bunch of Gilmon, then you have a guaranteed draw engine. So I'm playing a full playset of GG Mon. Okay. And I am playing four of the promo Gilmon. So this Gilmon, um, when attacking, trigger draw one. Digivolve zero on a level two. Um, red, so you can just digivolve this onto your GG Mon. So when you attack with this Gilmon, then you draw from the when attacking effect on the Gilmon. Then you draw from the when attacking effect on the GG Mon. So when you attack, you can draw two. So this is a really good um, draw engine going on for the Eosmon deck. Okay, and then I'm playing four of the X3 Gilmon. So this Gilmon is probably the second best Gilmon that we have for the deck right now. Um, Digivolves zero from Gigimon. So even though it has a Digivolution cost of um, one on a level two purple, it also has an alternate condition cost, uh, Digivolve cost from um, zero from Gigimon. And I'm only playing Gigimon, so this can always Digivolve for zero. On deletion effect, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 3000 DP or less. If no Digimon was deleted by this effect, both players trash the top two cards of their decks. So this card is really useful. So you still get the draw from Gigimon because this is a Gilmon. So I just include it mainly to serve as more Gilmon copies so you can draw more cards. But it also has the on deletion effect so you can possibly delete one of your opponent's um, low DP Digimon. So that's a positive, but it's also a positive that if that doesn't happen, then both players mill the top two cards of their deck. So just because you're playing Eosmon, you want more Eosmons in your trash. So it could come in handy. Um, I find that it doesn't have to mill, and then your deck is still pretty consistent. Um, just because you're playing so many Eosmons that they just um, eventually get deleted anyway, so your, your trash just fills up by itself. Uh, but, you know, if you end up getting the Eosmons in your trash um, early game because of this Gilmon, then uh, it, it helps. It, it's not important that it mills, but it's a pretty good effect that it does have um, that you can benefit from. But either way, if you delete something or if you mill, those are both positives. It's a Gilmon, so Digivolve onto Gigimon, attack, you still got the card draw. So I'm playing three of the Gilmon X Antibody. Um, honestly, um, I, I think that this card is good. So I think that you can bump this up to four. So I would probably um, change this instead of a three of to a four of. Um, Digivolve zero from level two. So I can Digivolve from Gigimon for zero. Digivolve zero from Gilmon. So if you wanted to, you can Digivolve off of your other Gilmon, just in case you want that extra Digivolution card draw bonus. Um, so in case you don't have something in your hand that you want to play, you're just like, okay, um, let's see if I can get something better off the top card of my deck. So you Digivolve off of your Gilmon, 
go into your Gilmon X antibody. So that um, extra card that you just drew can actually help you. Um, GG mount only counts, only um, concerns itself with Gilmon, Gallantmon, or Growlmon and their name when attacking. So although this is not an actual Gilmon, um, like exact match Gilmon, um, you still get the um, draw from it because it has Gilmon in its name. So the one Digivolving effect, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 3000 D Paralyze. Um, the one Digivolving effect does not really come up. But it can come up. So, you know, you also have a not so consistent benefit from this card that can come in handy, but mainly this is for your extra 9th, 10th, and 11th copies of Gilmon um, that you can digivolve onto Gigimon and then drop from. But this card, I feel like you can bump this up to 12, no problem. Um, because I find that if you don't get a Gilmon opening the game, it can hurt you, like it feels bad. So I, I would just bump this up to twelve to four copies. Um, you can also digivolve this off of your other Gilmons. Um, so either for the Digivolution bonus or either for the one Digivolving effect, if it can come up. So I'm playing these three other rookies, um, Solarmon. But I actually find that surprisingly Solarmon doesn't really benefit this deck. You are playing a bunch of Tamers because you're playing Eosmon. You're playing a bunch of Digimon out because you're swarming the field with Eosmons. But surprisingly, Death Xmon does very little against your deck because you aren't playing the level 4 Eosmons. You're just playing the level 5 Eosmons hard play from your hand. Or you play low, more level 5s from their one attacking effect. So you're not Digivolving your level 5s off of anything. So when a Def Axmon comes out, and then you have like two or three level five Eosmons out, they aren't deleted because they can't be de-digivolved. So they just remain level five. And then since they're not a level four Digimon, then Def Axmon doesn't delete them on play. So it's like, oh yeah, my opponent can play a Def Axmon. It doesn't really bother me that much. Um, after actually seeing it, I was like, wow. Def Xmon is actually not a problem for my deck because I'm not digivolving my level 5s off of anything. The only Digimon that Def Xmon can de digivolve is level 6 Eosmon. But I, I wouldn't say that Solarmon is necessary for the deck just because you aren't really digivolving that much um, in this deck aside from your raising area into your level 3. So you're you're basically very, very safe from Def Xmon. So I would replace one Solarmon with an extra copy of Gilmon X Antibody. Um, if you want more consistency, just replace these two other Solarmons with any other red um, Gilmon out there. Uh, yeah, you don't really need the Solarmons, apparently. And then, this is the fun part. So I am playing 14 of the Eosmon level 5s. So this Eosmon has a really good effect. It has several um, effects. So you can include up to 50 copies of cards with this card's card number in your deck. So basically this card has no card limit outside of the deck construction card limit. Um, when attacking, you may play one level 5 or lower Eosmon from your hand without paying its memory cost. So you can just play one for five memory um, during a turn, either way at the beginning, first turn, you can just play this for five memory. That's not a horrible play. Uh, it is a five cost Digimon, but the turn after, you can just swing with it, you play another Eosmon. So your five cost Digimon effectively became, oh, five costs to get two Digimon out and one security attack in. So it's not horrible to just on play this Eosmon. Um, the inheritable, this Digimon gets 1000 DP, so you are digivolving into your level 6 Eosmon. So basically, because you are playing 14 um, of the Eosmon level 5, then you have a pretty good chance of constantly drawing into them. The Gilmon line helps to draw more Eosmons, so you can refill your hand with Eosmons. 
you attack, you play with an EX mon that you just drew, and then you can just keep constantly refilling your hand with EX mons. So you can keep constantly attacking, swarming the field with EX mons. And these can also fill up your trash with EX mons once they are deleted, which is good for the level 6. So you have 14 different level 5s that you can reliably digivolve off of into your level 6. So you can essentially digivolve into your level 6 most of the time. So the level 6 Eosmon is from BT6. There is also a BT7 level 6 Eosmon, but I don't find that it's good for most decks. Um, so this is 13 play cost, 13,000 DP. Sometimes I do hard play this um, if it's necessary to hard play. Um, but you mainly digivolve off of your level 5 for 5. Um, when digivolving effect, for each tamer in play, you may place one level 5 or lower Eosmon from your trash at the top of this Digimon's Digivolution cards in any order. If you place two or more cards with this effect, delete one of your opponent's Digimon. So you are flooding the field with your tamers, hence why I initially thought Death Axemon was going to be a problem, but it actually is not because it doesn't delete any of your Eosmon um, when it comes into play and you're mainly playing Eosmons. So the only Digimon that can really delete is if you have a rookie out and then surprisingly your rookie lives through the security check and then it's just chilling on the field and then one turn when your opponent plays Death Axemon and then your level 6 Eosmon would just de-digivolve into level 5. Um, since it's a level 5 it's safe from Death Axemon's deletion effect on play or when digivolving and then your other level 5 Eosmons aren't digivolved onto anything. So they can't be de-digivolved, and because they're level 5, they're also safe. And then the only targets that can be deleted from Death Axemon on play, um, or when digivolve, it are your rookies. that Your lucky rookies that apparently live through the security check that you think that they wouldn't live through. But um, yeah, Death Axemon does very little for the stack. Most of the time, your rookie will just be deleted um, in case they don't, that is the only target that Def Xmon can actually delete. So it, even when it on plays, it does very little against the tempo of your deck. Like it doesn't board wipe you. Uh, and it's there are ways to get around its um, once per turn during the end of your turn. Um, delete one of your delete all of your opponents. Digimon with the lowest play cost, there are ways around it with this deck. But this level 6 Eosmon, very good. Um, the more Eosmons that you have in your trash, the more tamers that are on the field, both yours and your opponent, the more Eosmons that you can place under it um, when digivolving. And keep in mind that this Eosmon has that your turn plus 1000 DP inheritable. So, you know, you can just Gaia Force something out of nowhere for 5 memory, Digivolve in your level 5, delete something, delete one of your opponent's um, Digimon, and then for every 3 Digivolution sources that this Digimon has, it gains security attack plus 1. So if you have 5 memory out, you have a level 5 Eosmon in play, um, Digivolve this onto your level 5 Eosmon, delete one of your opponent's Digimon, and then come in with a surprising plus one or plus two possibly more security attacks um, there are games when it was like actually plus three security attacks maybe even plus four but i think the most i've gone was plus three against security control uh, because that matchup was really long so my opponent was just recovering i was just playing more eosmons my trash was just filling up with eosmons uh, but yeah, that's a really good card for deleting something out of nowhere, getting extra security attacks out of nowhere. Your opponent doesn't suspect it because you're playing so many Eosmon level 5s, you can just go into it um, basically whenever you have in your hand. Oh. The Tamers. So I'm playing 4 Manoa Bellucci. What I do find is that um, if you don't have at least one Manoa Bellucci out, it can be rough from you, for you. 
like you have the Gilmon line and then the Gilmon line helps for you to go into your, to get your Manoa Bellucci faster. Um, but if you don't have a Manoa Bellucci out, then things can be rough. Start of your turn. Um, she's a memory setter, so if you have two or less memory, then you set your memory to three. Um, your turn effect, when you play an Eosmon, you may suspend this tamer, reveal the top three cards of your deck, add one tamer card or one Digimon card with Eosmon and its name among them to your hand, place the remaining cards at the bottom, bottom of your deck in any order. So if you have this Manoa out, and then you play an Eosmon from your hand, the level five Eosmon for five memory, or the level 6 Eosmon for 13 memory, which is kind of a weird play, but actually helped me against Seccon. Um, more info uh, about that in my other video, because that explanation took a long time. But um, basically, um, if you play an Eosmon from your hand, you can suspend her, reveal top 3 cards, add a Tamer or Eosmon to your hand, or um, if you have this level 5 Eosmon, and then when you attack with it, and then you can play another level 5 or lower Eosmon from your hand, since you unplayed, since you played an Eosmon, then you can suspend her that way, so you don't have to pay the full cost for the Eosmon to play it from your hand, and in order to get um, Manoa Bellucci's um, Your Turn effect, but you can just also just attack with your level 5 Yosmon, play any level 5 or lower Yosmon, but in the stack only the level 5 Yosmon. Um, and then because you played something, suspend her, get more Yosmons into your deck, or get more Tamers. Um, if you're wary about Tamer deletion effects, just getting an, a second copy of Manoa Bellucci to have is good. Like, you don't have to play her right away. Just have one on the field, then have an extra copy in your hand just in case your opponent your opponent's playing red or black then you suspect that they have like black or Greymon, or if they're playing um mastamon and then they have a lucimon chaos mode or if they're you you suspect that they have some kind of tamer deletion just getting a second copy of manoa bluchi um can actually help you later on even if you don't play it right away just having an extra one in your hand is good to have if not then just fill your hand up with Eosmons or the next tamer that I'm about to reveal right now. So I'm playing four copies of Matt Ashida from Sardex 6. Um, when one of your Digimon is delayed, you may suspend this tamer to gain one memory during your turn. Uh, this Matt Ashida is surprisingly a very good tamer for this deck. Since the goal of Eosmon is to rush down your opponent, um, so you just constantly digivolve your Gilmons onto your Gigimons, bring them out, and then attack turn after turn, like as often as you can attack for your rookies, um, to, in order to get that draw bonus, and also in order to dwindle down your opponent's security. You're just attacking them with 3,000, 2,000 DP Digimon, so most likely your Gilmon will be deleted um, in the security check. So when those um, rookies become deleted, suspend your Matashinas, gain one memory for each because a Digimon was deleted during your turn. Um, so this card is a very reliable and consistent um, plus one memory during your turn. Most of the time, your attacking Digimon will be delayed because it's so low DP. And if not that Digimon becomes delayed, you are swarming the field, so one of your other Digimon can also attack security, have a chance to be deleted because they also have low DP, like your level 5 Eosmon is only 6,000 DP. So just attack for your Digimon. Most likely, your Digimon will be deleted on your turn, and then you gain one memory for each Matashita that you suspend. I'm playing three copies of Crimson Blaze. So Crimson Blaze is really good for getting rid of early game blockers. Um, because you are playing Rush, if your opponent has an early game blocker, you can just Crimson Blaze it, um, get rid of it. Um, even if it costs you 5 memory to get rid of 1 Digimon, if they only have the 1 blocker out, it's so worth it for the stack to just be able to get rid of blockers 
because the blockers really slow you down. You can't rookie rush your opponent with your Gilmons, so you can't dwindle down their security. You can't get the draw bonus from attacking. Um, you could attack with your Eosmon, but just attacking with half of the Digimon available to you slows down your deck. So just having Crimson Blaze out, so then you can delete your opponent's blockers, um, or if they are swarming you with low DP Digimon in a wide field, just get rid of a bunch of them. Um, this is a really good card. Delete all of your opponent's Digimon with 6,000 DP or less. Your opponent can't play Digimon via effects until the end of your of their next turn. Um, reduce the memory cost of this card in your hand by 1 for each Digimon your opponent has in play. So most of the time you're playing this for 5 or less. 5 if they only have 1 Digimon out. Um, 4 if they have 2 Digimon out, etc. So there is that 1% that you can play this for a full six if your opponent has zero Digimon out, but then you're you're playing against Seccon or something, and you just you have three memory, they have a memory setter. You're just like, well, I don't have any better cards to play, or I'm so close to winning this game, I don't want them to flame Hellsythe on their next turn in order to play Magnum Angimon and then recover one. So you can just play this for a full six if you find necessary, but most of the time you're going to play this for five or less memory. Security effect is just to activate the card's main effect. I'm playing two fly bullets. Um, so the only effect that really matters on this card is the main effect. Um, delete one of your opponent's level six or lower Digimon. It's a seven cost purple option. Um, I find that with this deck you want to keep rushing down your opponent. So you want to attack as often as possible with your red rookies. So your red rookies will probably be deleted after they swing at your opponent's security. Um, so you can't Gaia Force most of the time because while you can Gaia Force, um, if you use it right at the beginning of your turn or right before you swing with your red rookies, then most likely memory will pass over to your opponent's side. So you are slowed down a bit. You can't attack them with the red rookies that turn. But, you know, if you play Fly Bullet, which is a purple option card, and you have a bunch of Matashitas out, then what you can do is still attack normally. Attack as much as you can. Attack with your Eos Mons. Attack with your um, red rookies. And then even if the red rookies deleted, you at least have the Matashitas out. So you can just play this because you have a purple source in play. At that point, you might not have a red source in play, so Gaia Force uh, might not be as consistent or as easy to play as Fly Bullet is. So just having Fly Bullet instead of Gaia Force has helped me um, in several games. Um, it's a 7 cost, so it is cheaper than Gaia Force, but the drawback is that um, you can only delete one of your opponent's level 6 or lower Digimon. So if they happen to have a level 7, you cannot delete it, but that is... Um, not as um, constant of a worry. Like, there are some decks that go to level 7, but many of them stop at level 6. So the Fly Bullet is still really good. It will not um, hamper you in most games that it only deletes up to level 6. Um, so in most games, you should not be worried about its restrictions. It's really good to play um, because... It's really easy to play because you have Matashitas out, um, and it's only 7 play costs. So most of the time, it, it's better than Gaia Force. So X program, you don't have to ignore color requirements um, because you are playing Manoa Blue Cheese, you're playing Eosmons. So you can easily meet the white color requirements. So you don't need a Digimon with Dex or Def X in its name in play to use this option card. So the main effect, delete one Digimon without X antibody in its traits. If there are three or more Digimon in play, delete all Digimon without X antibody and their traits instead. So the first half of this main effect is basically a nerf down version of Gaia Force. So yeah, you can delete level 7s, you can delete level 6s, 5s, 4s, 3s. Uh, there are almost... There, there are a lot of targets they can delete with X program. But if your opponent has a Magmon X or a War Greymon X, or Gallantmon X Antibody, or any X Antibody, then you can't delete it. So it is better than Fly Bullet, in that it can delete level 7 Digimon, 
but it's still worse than Gaia Force because you can't delete any Digimon with X antibody in their traits. Um, but it does have the second half of its effect. If there are three or more Digimon in play, delete all Digimon without X antibody in their traits instead. So if you are playing against a swarm deck like Bloom Lordmon, um, so there are very easily more than three Digimon in play, or if you're playing against um, Armor Rush, which also likes to swarm the field, basically any deck um, that you're playing against that your opponent has even two or more Digimon, I would be comfortable playing this um, if you have one Digimon as a sacrifice on, so to meet that three Digimon in play. But you can just board wipe um, your opponent's Digimon with this card. So it's it's similar to Crimson Blaze in that it serves as removal. It can serve as a board wipe, but X program can delete your opponent's level 5s, level 6s, level 7s, um, as long as they don't have X antibody in their traits. So they could have a field of several Digimon out they can just all be deleted um, so long as they don't have X antibody. So it's kind of like a fun card to use. Um, even if you don't you don't get the board wipe because there are not enough Digimon in play, they can just at least gotta force something um, that does not have X antibody, so it's a pretty good card to include. Security effect, delete one of your opponent's Digimon without X antibody in its traits. So the security effect is just the nerf down gotta force effect. I'm playing two Miss Memory Boost. So it can help you um, to mill the top two cards of your deck. Um, so you may be able to get more Eosmons in your trash. But I again, I don't find that milling yourself is very important in this deck. So it can come up. It can be handy. But the the better reason to include, to include this card is to go to five memory. Um, so... Trash the top two cards of your deck and draw one. Um, then place this card in your battle area. Delay effect. Um, gain two memory. So again, you can trash top two cards of your deck, draw one. And then just suspend this at a later turn. Um, you can tr trash this at a later turn from your field to gain two memory. So because Manoa Bellucci sets you to three. And then you can just um, use this Miss Memory Boost to go to five. Then there are some interactions that you can go into. I will talk about that interaction in just a second. I'm playing one Schwartz Larsatz. So this is also a flex card in this deck. So the other flex card being Solar Mons. Like you can play Solar Mons, but after um, playing with them, I find that they are not really that necessary. So I would just replace them with one additional Gilmon X antibody and possibly two other red Gilmons. Uh, we don't have any more good red Gilmons for this deck aside from those three, the promo Gilmon, the EX3 Gilmon, and the Gilmon X Antibody from BT9. So as, apart from those three Gilmons, there are not better Gilmons for this deck as of right now. But in EX4, there is going to come a purple slash red Gilmon that um, has the same Digivolution um, costs as the EX3 Gilmon. So it Digivolves for 1 off of a level 2 purple or Digivolves 0 from Gigimon. Um, so it's pretty good. It has an on-play effect where if you if you and your opponent have more than 20 cards in... 20 or more cards in your trash trashes combined, then it has Rush. Um, so basically the other Gilmons they can play are vanilla or they have no effects that are relevant to your deck. Um, so you can just use them for now in the meantime if you want to get rid of the solar mons. But in EX4, once we do get that um, purple red Gilmon, um, it's going to be better. Uh, so you have the potential to rush down your opponent. Uh, you, you have the potential to just on play it and then give it rush, and then attack your opponent at the same turn. Or, you know, you can just digivolve it off of your egg, um, and then early game you can just play the Miss Memory Boost, um, turn one. But yeah, this Schwartz Larsatz is just a flex card. It can sometimes come up, it's not as good this format, because people tend to go taller than they tend to go wide. So it's, it's not that useful in this format, because people are building their Digimon and raising, 
then bringing them out once once they are level six and above. So Schwartz Larsant's not that great for this format. So it's a flex card. Um, you can add a 15th rookie if you find, oh yeah, I want to really, really reliably get a rookie turn one. So you can just add a 15th Gilmon to your deck, or you can just replace this card with whatever you want, maybe a fourth Crimson Blaze or a third Fly Bullet. Um, Schwartz Larsantz is really up to you what you want to replace with. Um, you, or you can just keep it like this because you have so much draw power in this deck that, you know, you find, oh yeah, you know what, since I'm drawing so many cards, I'm just going to run the one um, Schwartz Larsantz so then when it does come up uh, necessary, then I have it in my hand. So the interaction, um, there are a couple of interactions that really benefit you when you have five memory costs. So either you can just hard play um, a level five Eosmon, go from five memory to zero. So Manoa Bellucci sets you to th um, three. And then if you crack the memory boost, then you go up to five memory. So you can just play this for five. And then after you play it for five, Digivolve it into Eosmon level 6. Um, and then if there are enough Tamers on the field, if there are enough Eosmons in your trash, you can place more level 5 Eosmons under this to get a Gaia Force deletion effect out of nowhere. And then this gets a bunch of security attacks, um, so you can attack fit during your next turn. Or, alternatively, let's say you start your turn with Eosmon, level 5. Minoa sets you to 3 memory. You have two Metashitas out, or you have the one copy of Miss Memory Boost. So either way, you can crack the Miss Memory Boost, go to five, or you can um, bring your rookie out of raising, and then attack with it this turn, crash into security, suspend your two Metashitas, gain two memory. Either way, um, when you have a level five Eosmon already on the field, and you have some means of going to five memory, you can just... Oh, cool. I have five memory. Digivolve into Eosmon level six. Delete one of your opponent's Digimon. And then get maybe plus one or plus two security attacks when your opponent isn't suspecting it. Swing for at least 16,000 DP. Uh, because Eosmon, 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 plus 1,000 DP. So at least 16,000 DP, maybe more if you added more Eosmons under it. Um, so you can outlive many security attacks effects. Wyvern's Breath minus 15,000 DP um, does not stop this um, from getting more checks in because it's currently at least 16,000. Um, and most security Digimon are f at most 15,000. Um, there may be a Digimon that's higher than 15. I do not know for sure. Or, you know, your opponent can run Zoe Orimoto or TK Takeshi Sardak 1 or some kind of effects that buff up their security Digimon's DP. But 16,000 multiple checks, I feel pretty safe. So if you have this level 5 on the field, you can go up to um, 5 memory in some way. Digivolve for 5, activate its effect, delete one of your opponent's Digimon, and then just get multiple security checks in one turn. That is pretty good. So just get, going to 5 memory is really good for this deck. So you are playing a bunch of. Um, Matt Ashitas, because since you are rushing your opponent with low DP Digimon, then you can just gain a bunch of memory or the Miss Memory boost. So you can go from three memory Manoa sent you to to five memory, and then either play a level five Yosmon and then Digivolve into level six, get rid of something that turn. Or if you already have an existing level five on the field, Digivolve into your level six for five, delete something, and then get multiple security attacks in. So both are very likely scenarios that that have happened that have consistently happened with this deck um, so it's really good um, so the Matt Ashitas I just want to go over one more tech um, that I find is more much more useful than I thought so let's say you have two Matt Ashitas out right and then you have one Manoa Bluchi out and then you have two Eosmons out, two, two Eosmon level fives out. So you have 
these Digimon on the field. Two Eosmon level 5s, two Matashitas, a Minoa Veluchi. Your opponent just played a Def Xmon last turn. So pending uh, end of turn effects, then your lowest play cost Digimon will be deleted. And you are set to 3 memory because of the Minoa Baluchi. So what you can do is you can just play your turn as normal. So attack with Eosmon, attack with Eosmon, play more Eosmons. And then, you know, there's not much else for you to do. Your Eosmon are about to be delayed because you have your opponent has a Def Xmon. So what you can do is play a, a rookie for four um put the memory to one now there's no more pending effects end of your turn effects uh because your opponent has a death x mon then gilmon is then deleted and then since it's still your turn suspend your two matashitas Go from one memory on your opponent's side to one memory on your side. So you can just um, comfortably do that. And after doing that, play another Eosmon. So now you have more Eosmons on the field. Um, you have uh, you have more Eosmons on the field. Your opponent has a Def X, but the Def X does not hurt your Eosmons. Um, like, even if you have, like, so many Eosmons on the field, so many Tamers on the field... That they can play another Def X Mon if they have one from hand for free or basically free. Um, these cannot be de-digivolved. Um, they will not be deleted on with the Def X Mons on play effect. So you don't feel scared flooding your field with Tamers, flooding your field with Eos Mons. Because most likely um, you will have so many Eos... Uh, you will have so many rookies at this point in the game. And then if your opponent does something, you can just um, comfortably sacrifice a rookie turn after turn, suspend your Matt Ashidas, then more plays continue for you. So then you can play more Eos Mons to just end the turn. That was a strategy that really helped me going against security control. So that is something that you can do. Um, so this is very similar to um, the... Gabumon, Bond of Friendship, I yeah, um, Bond of Friendship, I think. So, Gabumon from Bond of Friendship players would use Analog Youth in their deck. Um, they would Digivolve from the um, promo Agunimon? No. They would Digivolve, they would Warp Digivolve using Matt Ishida from BT6 into Gabumon Bond of Friendship into and then because they warped Digivolved then their Gabumon Bond of Friendship would be delayed at the end of their turn and then if they manipulate their memory such that they go to one memory or two memory and then if they have one or two analog youths in play then they suspend them so after uh, at the end of their turn when Gabumon Bond of Friendship is going to be delayed they suspend the analog youths to gain just enough memory to go back to zero or even more so then they can continue their turn and it is a valid and legal play because it is at the end of their turn there are no more pending effects so then the Gabumon bond of friendship is elated and then since it's still their turn even at the end of their turn step uh, suspend the two analog youths or whatever they have gain more memory, and then they can, oh yeah, continue their turn. Um, so that was an interesting play that came up against in the tournament. I was so surprised that they were able to do that, but they did do it. So when I was playing against Seccon, I was like, wait a minute, I can do that play that my opponent did, except instead of Gabumon Bond of Friendship being deleted, going past memory, end of turn, and then, since it's end of turn, but still my turn to spend my Matashitas, uh, instead of the Analog Eves, and instead of the, like, the Bond of Friendship, it's a rookie that's deleted. So I can just resume play on my turn. Um, the Def Xmon only kicks in 
once per turn at the end of my turn. So I can't attempt to do, to do more deletion. Um, it can't attempt to d do more deletion because I already did it once that turn. So I can just play another Eosmon, for example. But yeah, so that's an interesting tech. Um, so surprisingly, um, just going quickly through the cards and also to explain some of the useful text that I have found. It's still a 40 minute video, so I did not save that much time in this video. But this is even more um, condensed than usual. But yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you in a bit. I'm actually going to condense down um, another video of mine right now. But yeah, this is an even more condensed down version of the Eosmon deck profile vi video. Um, but it's still surprisingly 41 minutes. Yeah, see you later.